Akash and T, the real reflection of me. I'm sitting outside on this beautifully sunny day, reading a book and sipping on some iced coffee, which is kind of irregular of me to be sipping on some iced coffee, but I don't know, today was like, it just felt right, you know? Um, anyways, I'm reading uh, a book by the name of Karate Do, My Way of Life, by the karate master Gichin Funakoshi. He founded the Shotokan style of karate, and this is his autobiography, right? And so I'm just like literally on page two right now. Um, but I love it, man. I've, I've been um, learning more about these like ancient like karate masters. Um, mostly through the YouTube videos, right? And um, I'm taking whatever YouTube is saying at, with a little bit of a grain of salt, knowing that um, every story that's told isn't entirely always told 100% spot on, right? Because there's just, it's secondary, it's like a secondary source or a tertiary source or even a quaternary source, right? Like there's so many levels of like, this was passed down from one person to the other and, and, and so on and so forth, or it was read somewhere, right? It's like, how accurate is some of the information? Mm, I don't know, maybe like 60%, 70% of it's accurate, and then other parts, maybe not so much. When you get it from a primary source, right, an autobiography, it's like, okay, wow, like this is like what this person experienced. Like, this is what this person understood and felt, and, and that was the reality, right? So I'm excited to actually really read about this man's life and in his own words. One of the first things that he talks about is kind of his childhood, right? He talks about a little bit of how he was born on the island of Okinawa. Um, and he was born on, I believe, the day of the Meiji Restoration, if I remember correctly, but just right around that time period, uh, 1868, uh, eight, between 1868 and 1870, right around then. I believe it was 1868, though, that, that, that he was born. And um, he was talking about the specifically the abolition of the top knot, right? So I've got long hair. You guys can clearly see that. Um, and I love my long hair. I really do. I really, really do. Um, I just value it a lot. I, I really, if I'm being honest, I really love it. I really love it. Now, I mean, if I were to get it cut off or shaved, would it be the end of the world? No, it's going to grow back. Um, would a part of me kind of enjoy that it would get shaved? Hell yeah, because I wouldn't have to deal with the long hair and like having it dry and all these things. But I really value it a lot. I really love it. Um, Anyways, they talk about how like the top knot back in, I think it was like feudal Japan, made, made, uh, yeah, feudal Japan really, I guess, was a, let me see, I'm, I'm gonna pull this out. Uh, in Okinawa in particular, this is in his own words, in Okawa, Okinawa in particular, the top knot was considered a symbol, not simply of maturity and virility, but of manhood itself. Man, it's like, it's just so interesting to me, you know? It's like how it's just like just having the, the top knot, right? So like this would be putting the hair up like in a, in a top knot was a symbol of not only maturity and not only of virility, right? Of like a man being uh, vi viral, right? Virile, right? Like a, so, so as a, a female is fertile, a man is virile, right? It's like the ability to procreate, I guess, to some degree. Um, it's just so fascinating to me. I don't know. It's a symbol of manhood. I, I, um, and that was, again, that, that's like feudal Japan right there, right? Like that's, um, uh, the samurai really held a high regard for that in and of itself. Me, myself, I like to think of myself as a samurai, though. If I were to fight uh, an ancient samurai like today, I'd probably beat the fuck out of me, but... I really honor those, that code of ethics, the Bushido, the Budo, the way of, of the sword. And I'm working on practicing that more, right, to the, to the way that I understand it. Part of, the reasons why, part of the reason why I study the martial arts. So what am I trying to say here? What am I saying here? Well, I don't really know. Um, I just find it really interesting that I didn't know about that, right? About the symbolism of the top knot in and of itself. And again, this is an ancient karate master in his own words saying what was the, like, what was the symbolism of it? What did it mean? Why was, why was that a thing? Um, 
So it's just interesting to me, you know? I'm, I'm walking this path to the best of my ability in the modern age, right? Um, whatever that means. And I'm grateful for being able to tap into that, some of that wisdom just through the word, the written word. feel right now like as I'm saying this I feel almost um, not shy that wouldn't be the proper word for it but um, almost like phony like right like uh, I don't know if what I'm saying is like like I don't know yeah that's the best way to really describe it it's like who, who am I to say this right it's like what are you what are you talking about to some degree right like why are, why is this why are you recording a video of you saying something like this, right? And I don't know, is I guess my real answer. But at the same time, it's like 100% what feels right. Because I wouldn't have recorded it otherwise. And then lastly, I'm doing my best to like walk this path and, and um, embody this to the best of my ability today. That's what I got. Keep up, thrive, stay sexy.